Jesus had great compassion on those who lived on the margins of society. And we know that he healed many of them. And when he healed them, he often said, Your faith has made you well. As if some inner conviction with regard to the power of God to heal them had been the reason for their healing. Jesus seemed in his healing to highlight the great power of faith in God's ability to do the seemingly impossible. So welcome to this morning's reflection and I'm glad that you could be with us this morning as we look at the signs and wonders that Jesus performed. And really, in a sense, what were biblical miracles? Miracles are often thought of as events that contradict the laws of nature and that are beyond science and reason. That's how we see miracles. But this is not what the Bible means by miracles. And any biblical scholar will tell you that, that that is not the biblical interpretation of miracles. You see, because the law of nature is a modern scientific concept, the Bible knows nothing about nature, let alone its laws. For biblical people, the world is God's creation. And whatever happens in the world ordinary or extraordinary, is part of God's providence. The Bible does not divide events into natural and supernatural because it simply sees God as being behind all events. We live and move and have our being in God. A miracle, then, in the Bible is an unusual event which has been understood as an unusual act of God, a mighty work of God. So certain acts of God are called miracles or wonders because they astonish, they surprise, and they make people marvel and wonder. So creation is a miracle. Grace is a miracle. The growth of a mustard tree, huge and large from a tiny seed, that is a miracle. The liberation of the Israelites from Egypt, that is a miracle. The world is full of miracles for those who have eyes to see them. If we are no longer able to wonder, except when the laws of nature are broken, we are truly in a sad state. The laws of nature are scientific hypotheses, and they are constantly being reviewed and revised in the light of new evidence. Much of what was a law of nature in the 17th century would not be regarded as such today. So the laws of nature are not a basis upon which to decide whether something is a miracle or not. Some things may contradict the laws of nature as we know them and not be a miracle. In other words, not be an act of God. For example, acupuncture or um, extrasensory perception or the feats of Indian yogis. And some things are miracles, even when they have a perfectly natural explanation. For the Jews, the greatest miracle in the Bible was the Exodus miracle. The crossing of the Reed Sea, not the Red Sea, which is a mistranslation. 
The Reed Sea is a marsh to the north of the Red Sea. And all serious scholars would agree that the crossing and the drowning of the Egyptian army can be explained by the natural phenomenon of tides and winds which were providential for the Israelites. Yet it remains a miracle. A miracle is an act of God which in its power and unusualness causes us to wonder and marvel. As such, it can be called, and in the Bible is called, a sign. A sign of God's power, a sign of God's providence, of God's justice and mercy, and of his will to save and liberate. Jesus' healings were not there for show, but rather to liberate people from their suffering and their fatalistic resignation. He wanted to awaken compassion and faith in the people around him. And this would and this would enable the power of God to become effective in their midst. And so today, look for the miracles that happen in your life. Don't look for the supernatural. But look for God in the details of your life and see the miracles that are there and give thanks and have faith that these miracles that are there continue to be there for all eternity. May you have a blessed day.